Hello survivors. It's that time of the year once again. Winter festivities are starting and that includes brand new Eldu E season. It's time to see everything you need to know about season 18. Let's get started. As usual, let's check out the teaser. One of the most interesting characters of this short teaser is the blonde lady shown in the image. She seems to be eating some kind of canned food. She is the first character ever to wear glasses, she also has a blue scarf. It's possible this is a brand new outfit style or she is one of the main season 18 protagonists. Another thing we wanted to mention is this new Eden sign, remember it for later on in the video. Now, let's talk about Season 18 rewards. Thankfully, developers have already shown some of them to us. First up are two brand new backpacks. We really like how they look and think they match the Christmas spirit. Which one is your favorite? We've also seen concept art for a new outfit style. During the 2017 Christmas event, all the crowbars in-game turned into candy canes like this one. There is a high chance developers are bringing this feature back. Lastly, we have to mention two official events that are currently going on in the LDOE community. One of them is being held on the last day Facebook page while the other one is in the official LDOE Discord. If you have cooking skills or enjoy filling out advent calendars you should check them out. Especially since you can earn valuable in-game rewards. And finally, we have three official Christmas last day on Earth stories. They were posted by the developers of the game on LDOE's Facebook page back in 2017. We don't know could they be the inspiration for future events, but we think they are really interesting. They also remind us of some current LDOE lore such as New Eden. Take a look. The road to the south is our long Christmas dream, said Braun and became silent. I had heard this statement three times. For the third one I asked about its meaning and regretted this at once. Braun wasn't good at talking, and when he started his thought went to some kind of a labyrinth. This chaos was felt in his diary notes. There he would write about his childhood, that he was given a bat for his birthday and that all kids growing in this world were forced to kill elder generation with baseball bats and next, about the road to the south. I foretaste long editing of this chapter. So, it took him about half an hour to explain that the road to the south was not a road but a period when rumors about the first reservation came to Weserfield and neighboring districts. Those days many refugees started leaving their homes and went to the south. It was December. No one knew exactly where to go and how long it would take but no one really cared. People dreamed of a safer place past Riz Mountain Pass. However the first thing they saw after the mountain pass was Fort Rock. It was designed as a prison in the 80s but its building was put on hold in the beginning of the 20th century and then was secretly restarted somewhere between 2010 and 2014. People who lived there only with a hope to survive suddenly heard the megaphones of Fort's walls. You are in a contamination zone. Passing this way does not seem possible. Or, return to your homes, no passage this way. Tired and broken, refugees stopped in front of the fort. Some dozens of people managed to gather beneath the walls in the first weeks. They held protests, even hunger striking but the military weren't impressed at all. They had seen way more scarier things. When the refugees tried to sneak into the fort, the military started using gas. It wasn't that harmful but there were deaths. At least, there were such rumors. It's hardly possible to find witnesses of those events somewhere in Weserfield, so learning anything speaking military language does not seem possible. Fort Rock has been empty over the past few years. 
The military left in the period between the second impulse and the first reserves, but every Christmas Eve you can find a simple memorial made of fir branches there. Some people put toys and colorful ribbons there. Others, food and notes. Some people just say important words. Fresh and withered fir branches can be noticed throughout the entire road. It used to be a hint for earliest explorers first but then took a deeper meaning. It became not just a symbol of the road to the south but a symbol of faith, that everything will get better this Christmas. The accident near Fort Rock coincided with the total demilitarization of the district, border crossing points were dissolved, watchtowers were left. Braun thought that the military were relocated to protect the first reserve in the region but he wasn't sure. I suppose that the accident could be connected with Braun's sons although he never said that. In fact, he didn't like to talk about them. On Christmas Eve, we used to set up a Christmas tree and decorate it with handmade ornaments. We were poor and my mother didn't have enough money to afford a real present for me. That's why she would make presents herself. She used cartoon, paper and small pieces of wood from Mr. Hogstein's workshop. I remember once my mom gave me the best cartoon dog in my life. I called him Goldfree. Sometimes she made not one but some presents for me at the same time and then joked that even if those presents weren't the real ones, there were plenty of them. It was the last day of school before the Christmas holidays. I was on my way home, holding my backpack in my hand and slightly kicking it with my knees. It took me a while to notice some chaos behind our trailer. I came closer and looked out over the neighboring fence. I couldn't believe my eyes. It was Santa Claus. He was beating some strange-looking mannequins and shouting for help, help me. I'm in danger. I hurried to the door where my baseball bat was kept, took it, and ran to save Santa. According to Santa, his crew had been attacked. Zombie mannequins attacked it right in the air breaking his sleigh and biting his reindeer which turned into reindeer mannequins. And toys that he was carrying, they were stolen. Of course, Mom's story was a bit exaggerated sometimes and the beard was constantly ungluing, but that moment I was the happiest kid in the world. I helped Santa to defeat mannequins attacking our yard, find his reindeer which turned into cartoon figures and reminded me of Goldfree. I helped him to collect parts for his new sleigh and make new toys to bring Christmas to other kids. Recording 1. It's the very first time I've entered a building through the chimney. It's not as funny as it seems in Christmas cartoons. Feels like my rib cracked. When I get up, my breathing stops, I can't stand up straight. I cut my gym bag into pieces and made a bandage. Well, something like it. Probably, it'll make walking easier. Recording 2. I'm recording this on a dictaphone I found in the house. It was in Santa's costume. It's not a joke. There was a bit dusty, but warm Santa's costume in the closet. There was a dictaphone in its pocket. An old model with a cassette. I listened to it but the cassette turned out to be empty so I decided to record myself. Anyway there is nothing else to do. So here it is, a Christmas Survivor podcast. Recording 3. There is a box full of carrots in the basement. It's all soft. If I was sure it's Christmas Eve, I would joke about sexist presents this year. Damn, it hurts to laugh. I found an old calendar for 2018 and trying to figure out what date it's today. Can't say for sure but Christmas must be coming. Recording 4. God, I'm genius. It hurt to laugh yesterday and now I'm carrying the box of soft carrots from the basement today. I nearly can walk. The dictaphone makes strange noises from time to time, there's some yellow light above the cassette. Seems like my Survivor podcast is going to fall into oblivion. Recording 5. Somebody was messing with the door lock this morning. I managed to hide in the basement through the pain but it turned out to be some boy. His name is Bradley, he is kind of a small exchanger. I got two painkiller pills and a battery for 20 carats. When he first noticed my costume into the gap, he asked me what I had done to Santa. I said that I worked as his assistants but we had an argument, don't know why but then Bradley promised to bring me water. 
We found a common language and only after a small talk I realized that he didn't really know what the real Christmas was and Santa was kind of a superhero for him. Recording 6. Started getting up and walking. The rib still hurts but less. Spending a lot of time in bed influenced my sleep patterns badly. Damn, I'm talking just like dad. Hopefully Bradley didn't come while I was sleeping. I got used to darkness and my eyes hurt when it's daytime. Recording 7. I heard some noises near the house this night. Sounded like steps. I was sitting for a while staring at the forest. What if somebody tracked down Bradley when he came here? Or he reported me himself? But no, it appeared to be deer. A family of deer. When it's Christmas you just want to sit near the fireplace, give presents and hear your beloved people laughing. But looking after deer at 4am is also not that bad. Recording 8. There's almost no more water in the can but it's too dangerous to go outside. Bradley probably came when I was sleeping. Don't know what to think. I wanna eat but even thinking of carrots makes my stomach rise. Recording 9. I discovered a note near the door, there also was a bottle of water. Bradley wrote, I come but you deadn't a pin. Then I couldn't. Mine wants to go south. I would call you to come with us but you'd better stay in this building. It looks F.A. That's it survivors. We truly hope you enjoyed today's video. We should know more information about season 18 soon enough. Until then, may we suggest listening to Full Last Day on Earth soundtrack with more than an hour of amazing music. Thank you and happy holidays.